Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. This is another video in the series where I'm demonstrating how I process the same image in multiple applications. My goal is to try to give everyone an apples to apples comparison of the processing engine in each of these applications and how they compare to one another. Yesterday I did a video where I took this raw file and I processed it in Capture One. Prior to that I did a video where I took that same raw file and I processed it in Lightroom. So there's the Lightroom processing, there's the Capture One processing. Now today we're going to take that same raw file and we're going to process it in Exposure X6. For those of you maybe not familiar with Exposure X6, um, it's made by Exposure Software but that company used to be called Alien Skin. So if you ever heard of Alien Skin software, that's what this is. It just, they've changed their name to Exposure Software now. Now, um, I'm going, I'm not necessarily trying to make the images look identical to one another. I'm just trying to make them look good to me because as you'll see in today's video, uh, each of the processing engines are, are different and Exposure X6's X6 processing engine is different enough compared to Capture One and Lightroom where I probably won't be able to uh, make it look like either of these. I'm going to just make it look, oops, I'm going to make it look good to me. So um, we'll just do the best we can here. Now um, for those of you that are used to using Lightroom, coming over to Exposure X6 probably has the least learning curve. It's very similar and the layout is very similar to Lightroom. I'm just going to go right to the basic uh, panel here and I'm going to start out with shadows and open those up. And I think you could see right away if you watch those other two videos, you could see the shadows doesn't um, work as similar to the shadow sliders in Capture One and Lightroom did. So it's a little different. And I mentioned this in my comparison guide. This is a free PDF you could download where I compare uh, six different post-processing applications to one another. It's a free guide. In the description below this video, I'll have instructions how you could download it. All right, so I opened up shadows. I'm going to bring in highlights quite a bit. Um, get a white point. I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key. It's Option on my Mac, Alt on the PC, and move it to the right. And you can see I'm clipping the sun as I did in other applications, but you can see it's kind of like just it's a little bit touchy but if I go right there I remove all clipping so I'll leave it right there and blacks I'm not clipping any of the blacks again I'm holding in the option key on my Mac and I'll move it to the left you can see I'm starting to clip right there so um it's okay now uh, what I like to do sometimes when I see uh, that the shadows are still pretty dark even though it looks like I'm just barely clipping them is with exposure x6 I like to jump down to the tone curve. And when I jump down to the tone curve, you'll see that it has shadows, midtones, and highlights. Sometimes I'll go to midtones and I'll open those up a little bit. And I'm probably clipping again, but I'm not really going to worry about clipping too much. It doesn't consume me, um, as you probably could tell from the other videos I did. So then I could come back then once I do that and I could readjust here. If I go to whites and hold that alter option key, and you can see I'm clipping, but that's okay and blacks. I'm just going to leave it at that. We could add a little contrast too. That of course is going to make those darks a little darker. The brights a little brighter. But um, as I mentioned in that free PDF download, the guide I have, I find the tone the hardest part to adjust in Exposure X6. At least it's hard for me. And it's particularly hard on an image like this that is a sunset or a sunrise. Um, Beyond that, it's as you'll see, it's an excellent um, application. Um, this tone, these tone adjustments, though, aren't necessarily that it's a bad app. It's just maybe me. You know, I'm just not as good at it um, with Exposure XX. Now we're going to jump down to color, and I'm going to go right to saturation. We're going to increase saturation of the yellows and the oranges, and then I'm going to go down to luminance, and I'm going to make the yellows a little darker. And I'm going to make the oranges a little darker and I'm going to make the blues a little darker as well. So I'm done with the color filter or the color adjustments, I should say. Then I'll jump back up to basic and I'm going to go to clarity. 
And I'm going to add some clarity. And then I'm going to add some saturation as well. Quite a bit of saturation, I think, here. Okay, I'm getting there. And um, as I mentioned in my previous videos, there's really no noise in this image at all. So I'm not even going to um, worry about uh, noise reduction or, you know, anything like that. I really don't need to do any sharpening uh, per se. It's a landscape. I don't need it to be so sharp. Um, you know, in noise reduction, there is none. So those are our controls there for that, though, if you want to. But like my other videos, I am going to brighten up these uh, cliff, this cliff in the background. So to do that, you have to add another layer. And to do that, we'll go up. You can see there's the layers panel, and then there's lay add layer. So we'll add an empty layer. So we added the layer. And then I'm going to open this up a little bit. I'll pull this down. Well, first I need to get a brush. I'm sorry. Then, once I get the brush, then I pull that down. There we go. And now we could see that you also have different types. You have the brush, you have a radio filter, and then you have two different types of uh, linear gradients if you wanted to use one of those. But we're going to use the brush, and you see that we have controls here for feather and flow. I'll leave feathering and flow at 100, and um, you could see that the size of the brush is affected by the slider here. And as I move it, the brush kind of is in the middle, so you could see how big it is. And uh, you could also use the bracket key. The left bracket key makes it smaller, right bracket key larger. And let me put it where you could see it. All right, so the bracket keys also work for that. So we'll use the bracket keys, get a smaller brush. Then we're going to go to the basic tab and we're going to take exposure up. But we, it's affecting everywhere, but don't worry about it because when I start painting, it will only affect where I paint. So it's affecting the cliffs in the out, out, outer area there, or the kind of the background. So we'll come in just like I did in the other images. We'll come in here, but I'm going to do a sloppy job as I did in those, those images. People were commenting, you messed up that you didn't paint the cliffs right. Yeah, I know I'm not doing a good job, right? I don't, I mean, I'm doing a video. I don't want you guys to be bored to tears watching me obsess over every little brush stroke. So Again, now that's only affecting those cliffs in the background, as you can see. So we're just brightening them up a little bit. And we're going to add more saturation, similar to what I did in the, um, the previous videos. So I'm pretty much done with that brush. We'll move this back up, close that down. Go back to layer one. This is where we adjust everything on layer one. And um, I don't know. Let's go to that tone curve again. Let's just see what if I add a little contrast. Yeah, I think a little contrast helps all that. And then I think finally we'll just finish it off with a vignette. Now the vignette in Exposure XX works opposite of vignettes in other applications in that uh, if you move it to the left like you do in those applications to get a dark vignette, you'll get a light vignette. So move it to the right to get that dark vignette is the vignette I want. All right, and that's pretty much it. So there's my, I'm going to turn off my brush up there. And there's my adjustments of uh, this image in Exposure X6. Uh, there again, well, this, I don't know what happened here. Let's try to, there we go. This is um, Capture One, and this is Lightroom. So Lightroom, Capture One, Exposure XX. Now you can see, um, as I mentioned at the top, I didn't think I could make it look exactly like those other images and I just really didn't try. Uh, just kind of wanted to make it look good to me. Now, one thing I failed to mention in um, the other videos is all of these apps that I do in this series have fully working free trials in the description below this video. Um, there'll be links where you could download them. Also, uh, for some of the applications, I have discount codes as well. So if you choose to purchase any of these apps and I have a discount code for it, definitely use it to save yourself a few dollars. Um, I'm debating now, I'm, I'm doing these in alphabetical order outside of Lightroom. I did Lightroom first, but next up would be Luminar AI, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be coming up with a, a, like a maintenance update in the next few days. So I might postpone Luminar AI and jump ahead to On One Photo Raw 2021. 
That way, when I do the video, I'll be using the latest version of Luminar AI. So I think I might skip that and at least, you know, postpone that one um, until I get that maintenance update. And I'll jump right to uh, On One Photo Raw 2021 in my next video, which probably will be tomorrow. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.